reckless and irresponsible and relentless promotion of disinformation and outright lies about what's going on. It's undermining confidence in the people of Florida. Why do you think Trump is spreading misinformation? I don't know. I, I, I simply don't know. You can speculate, but it, I, I, I just find it, I mean, I, I, I know I've used the phrase more than I've used it ever in my whole career, un-American. It's un-American. It's not who the hell we are. What are they talking about? Now, this is so predictable. So Floridians are focused on survival, not politics. But Democrats and their media lackeys were busy with another type of disaster relief today, a rescue operation for Kamala's campaign. As they have so many times before, they're trying to deflect and even silence their political opponents. And Kamala seems like she's desperately trying to turn the page from her underwhelming media tour, so she jumped on the disinfo bandwagon. Are we concerned about any misinformation or disinformation regarding evacuations that we need to clear up at this point? Uh, there's been a lot of misinformation out there, Madam Vice President, that's for sure. But what is all of this misinformation they're so worried about? Former President Trump has led this onslaught of lies. Assertions have been made that property is being confiscated. It's simply not true. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Where did Biden find people saying that property is being confiscated? Well, after some digging, we found the White House sourced a single Twitter account with fewer than 5,000 followers for that bit of misinformation. So if anyone is amplifying disinformation from fringe sources, it's the Democrats themselves and Biden. Yet with battleground poll numbers trending toward Trump, the pro-Harris media, they're panicked, they're frustrated, which means a return to the echo chamber. There is a significant amount of misinformation being spread. They are keenly aware of the misinformation that is currently circulating on all corners of the Internet. It's something that is obviously so concerning to the administration, and we're really seeing the uh, effects of it. And again, what are they basing this on? One of the things that has struck me about Hurricane Milton, the way that I've heard people discussing this storm and the sort of distrust about what this storm actually is. I spoke to an elderly woman who told me that she believed that this hurricane was geoengineered. Okay, so now one random woman that he ran into makes a CNN disinformation narrative? Now, the truth is, FEMA is also doing its own damage control because it hurt its own credibility. Now, last night on The Angle, we exposed the agency-wide prioritization of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And Fox, of course, has already documented their slow-footed response to Hurricane Helene. We just feel like we're being forgotten. We haven't received any response from FEMA. We're not getting the amount of support that we need. We haven't seen FEMA. We haven't seen Red Cross. We haven't seen Hearts with Hands. We've seen no agencies come through here. There's so much more that could be done. And giving us $750, if you can even apply for it, is ridiculous. $750 isn't going to do anything, even if you do get approved. But FEMA wants you to feel sorry for them. The environment's been very tough the last couple of weeks with all of the information that we've been, misinformation that we've been seeing. Uh, it's difficult to operate when we don't have trust and, and trust in those institutions that are built and there to protect people. Uh, and so we need to continue to push forward on getting that accurate information out there. That's what we've been doing. Oh, it's hard for them? Okay. Well, the truth is the Biden-Harris administration did not get its act together until public outrage grew and Americans realized how FEMA was actually spending our money. And yeah, it's our money. And also, when we discovered that it was obvious that the feds hadn't pre-deployed enough resources, despite knowing how bad the hurricane was actually going to be. But now, Harris and Biden are trying to spin their failures as misinformation. But again, other than a few fringe theories out there, there are certain facts that are beyond dispute. First, FEMA did neglect residents in areas ravaged by Hurricane Helene, as exposed by the victims themselves. And it wasn't until they started speaking out 
And Elon Musk publicly criticized the trouble he was having getting his Starlink terminals dropped into affected areas, that things finally started improving. Second, DHS Secretary Mayorkas literally told us they were running out of money for FEMA hurricane assistance. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. Third, FEMA allocated over $640 million this year alone to sheltering migrants. So combine this with other money that DHS, which oversees FEMA, has already spent on resettling migrants since 2021. And we're talking billions. We don't even know how much, but billions and billions of dollars since Biden and Harris took office. And this money, of course, should be spent and allocated to shoring up disaster management for Americans, not on illegal aliens. Fourth, in addition to the billions for the care of migrants, Kamala just boasted about $157 million that her administration greenlit to go to Lebanon. So instead of addressing the substantive criticisms, the Harris camp and their immediate protectorate is sprinkling their hurricane warnings with just totally irrelevant, petty, and nonsensical smears. It is unconscionable, frankly, that anyone who would consider themselves a leader would mislead desperate people. The last thing that they deserve is to have a so-called leader make them more afraid than they already are. The gamesmanship has to stop. At some point, the politics have to end, especially in a moment of crisis. You know what was unconscionable? that you were in Vegas at a campaign event when this hurricane was ripping through North Carolina. Yeah, you're the vice president still, remember? Look, what we know from our experience with COVID is that powerful forces collaborated with government institutions to censor their critics. And now, all these years later, we see that many of the physicians who were censored or punished during COVID were, in fact, telling the truth. The same censorship happened surrounding the Hunter Biden laptop in the fall of 2020, right before the vote. And now, 27 days until this year's election, and they're engaged in the same type of censorship tactic. But we won't let them get away with it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.